The big question is, how the heck do speakers work? That is exactly what we're gonna answer in this video. Welcome, welcome back to RAC, where we talk all things audio production and sound. Studio monitors, often referred to as reference monitors, are the backbone of audio engineering. And yeah, you guessed it, they are also speakers. Unlike consumer speakers, studio monitors are designed for accuracy and precision, ensuring that every detail of the audio is faithfully reproduced. In this video, we will delve into the inner working of speakers, looking at their components, the technology behind them, as well as active and passive designs. Hi, I'm Diana Everett, I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and RAC grad. We will be going over the most common type of speaker you will encounter, which is a dynamic speaker. However, there are lots of other types of speakers, so if that's interesting, please let me know and I can do other videos for you. Let's go. The basic principle, electromagnetic induction. It's probably not the most basic principle. However, it is the base principle of dynamic speakers. <laughs> At the heart of a speaker's operation lies the principle of electromagnetic induction. If you'd like a nerdy video explaining electromagnetic induction in depth, I happen to be a nerd, so I can do a video for you if you wish. Just write down in the comments. But for now, I've linked an article explaining in the description for those who want to dive in a little deeper. In simple terms, speakers convert electrical signal into mechanical movement, which in turn creates sound waves. The core components involved in this process are the voice coil, the magnet, the cone or diaphragm, and the suspension system or spider. The magnetic coil and cone. The magnetic coil or voice coil is a crucial component in speakers. It operates on the principle of electromagnetism. When the audio signal, an alternate current passes through the coil, it creates a magnetic field. This field interacts with the permanent magnet attached to the speaker structure, causing the coil and the attached cone or diaphragm to move back and forth. This movement pushes and pulls on the air, generating sound waves. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> the cone, typically made of lightweight yet rigid material, is crucial for effectively transferring this motion into the air. The material and shape of the cone significantly impact the sound quality, influencing factors like frequency response and distortion levels. Let's go over the anatomy of studio monitors. At the heart of every studio monitor are several components. We have the driver, so the magnetic coil and the cone and what we just talked about, and the crossover network. Each of these elements play a crucial role in delivering and reproducing accurate sound that audio engineers can rely on. Drivers, powerhouse of sound. We often hear the term drivers when speaking of speakers, but what does it mean? The driver essentially acts as the heart of a speaker system. They are responsible for converting the electrical signal into sound waves. As such, we would consider them a transducer, using that electromagnetic induction, converting those electrical signals into sound waves. Drivers typically consist of several parts, including a diaphragm, usually a cone or a dome, a voice coil, a magnet, a spider or suspension system, System, a frame, and or other supporting components depending on the individual design. There are also many different types of drivers, we're just going to cover a few, but just like speaker types, there are many more. However, these drivers are not overly effective at reproducing the entire audible range of human hearing, so from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Therefore, speakers or studio monitors are often designed with various types of drivers. There are quite a few different drivers, however, the most popular dynamic speaker driver types are woofer and subwoofer. These are for low frequency sounds. They are typically larger and this is because low frequency waves are longer and typically need a larger surface area to be accurately reproduced. Woofers consist of a cone, a voice coil, a spider, or a flexible suspension system and a magnet. The cone, often made of a paper, plastic, or or metal moves back and forth to create the sound waves. The coil attached to the cone sits in the magnetic field and moves when an electrical current passes through it, just like we saw. And this drives the cone's motion. Okay, subwoofers and subs are often in their own cabinet, which is basically like their own separate little house. As we saw in the low end management video, the lower the frequency, the more energy it's going to take to produce. So it's going to be big and it's going to be powerful. Mid range, same principle as the woofers. However, the diameter of the diaphragm is going to be smaller as it takes less energy to produce those frequencies. Tweeter, 
handles the high frequency sounds. They're smaller than woofers and they are designed to reproduce the short, rapid sound waves of high frequencies. Tweeters often use materials like silk or metal for the diaphragms, enabling them to move quickly and accurately. The construction of the tweeter's voice coil and magnet are similar to the woofers. However, they are just on a smaller scale. Then we have super tweeters for the very high frequencies. These driver types all work on the same principle and the differences in their builds depend on the frequency ranges they are designed to reproduce. In general, deeper frequencies require a larger diameter of driver as well as a more robust design of the driver. So here are a few different designs you might encounter in studio monitors. Two-way speakers, having two drivers. Typically use a woofer to cover the low end and a tweeter to cover the high end. Three-way speakers, having three drivers. Typically using a woofer for the low end, a mid-range driver for the mid-range, as well as a tweeter for the high end. A four-way speaker. This usually adds a super tweeter on top of a three-way system to produce the super high end of the audible range. And this helps take some load off the regular tweeter. All right, frequency division and the role of crossovers. To ensure that each driver handles the correct frequencies, studio monitors use crossover networks. These circuits split the audio into separate frequency bands. Passive crossovers are found in passive monitors and they are placed between the amplifier and the drivers. They use passive components like capacitors or inductors to then divide the frequency bands. Active crossovers are used in active or powered monitors. These are electronic circuits that split the signal before amplification, allowing for more precise control and often resulting in better overall sound quality. Active crossovers can be adjusted to optimize the performance of the different drivers, leading to a more accurate sound reproduction. Active versus passive studio monitors. The main difference between active and passive studio monitors lies in how they handle amplification and crossovers. Active monitors come with built-in amplifiers tailored to each driver. This integration ensures that the amplifier's characteristics and power are perfectly matched to the different drivers, resulting in more accurate sound reproduction. The active crossover network in these monitors allows for precise frequency division before amplification, reducing distortion and improving clarity. Passive monitors. They require an external amplifier. While they can offer more flexibility in terms of upgrading and component selection, they also put the responsibility of matching the amplifier to the speaker on the user. The passive crossover network in these speakers will divide the frequencies after the amplification. This can sometimes result in a bit more distortion and affect to your sound. So I hope that made sense. I feel like I covered all of the basics and sound moving through electromagnetic induction, all of the different components in a speaker, drivers, all of that. Understanding the intricacies of studio monitors, speakers, kind of essential for audio engineers. From drivers, magnetic coils, to crossover networks and the distinction between active and passive, each component really plays a role in how sound is reproduced accurately. By choosing the right studio monitors and understanding how these speakers work. Engineers can ensure their audio projects are reproduced with the clarity and precision their projects deserve. As mentioned in the low-end management video, it helps with understanding how your sound is actually produced with these like little wizard contraptions. And by understanding these systems, you can best make mixing and production decisions with confidence and also understand the pitfalls in why some systems aren't translating well. Partially, because we will also kind of have to understand some acoustics, remotes, and speaker placement, which we could also do a video on. So if you want a video on that, let me know. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it helped with understanding speakers and sound. Maybe rewatch it a few times if it's something's not clear, or maybe if you have any feedback, it's super helpful. We come out with new content every week, so feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!